giving our praise to God, and I am to our pastor, our Reverend Dr. Shelby L. Tate Sr., and to our first lady, Sister Doris Tate, and to the members of Rose Hill Mission, Missionary Baptist Church, we'd like to say good morning. We thank God for another opportunity to be in the house of the Lord one more time and be able to uh, try to bring something to us today to be able to give us joy and hope as we look towards the future and to know that no matter how bad things might seem at the moment, that God still sits high and He still looks low and that uh, He knows what we need better than we know how to ask. So we pray that we continue continue on and keep the faith and not only to, to try to encourage ourselves but look at our brothers and our sisters who might not be as strong but have a willing and desire to be able to encourage them and let them know that God still lives. All right? We thank God for, once again, we have a, another good lesson. And we pray that as we look at it, although it was way back in biblical times, which we're dealing with the book of Deuteronomy today, but the lesson is very uh, much uh, uh, good for us today because some of the same problems we'll find that our leaders were having at that time in history. Uh, we as human beings, we are still of the same nature and still of the same hard heart and stiff necked and that sometimes we have a tendency not to follow leadership. But we pray as we look at our lesson today, we are come away today uh, with an overall feeling of exactly uh, how to follow leadership and who puts the leader in place. And at the same time, uh, when we do be obedient to our leaders, and as our leaders follow God, he will be well with our soul. But before we get started in our lesson today, we're going to go ahead and uh, read a word of scripture. Then we'll come back with a prayer, and then we will go right into the lesson. All right? The scripture that we will be coming from today is Romans, the 10th chapter, starting reading at the fourth verse. Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them records that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone that believeth. Uh, we pray, Lord, add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and above all, to the doers of his word. Let's bow here for a moment of prayer. Our Father in heaven, as we come before thy presence with our head bowed and our hearts humble, we come thanking thee, Father, for yet again another day. We pray to Father that as we rose this morning to see the light of a new day, we realized, Father, that we, we were blessed because there were many who laid down on last night will not be enjoying the privilege that we do today. But knowing that, uh, we come with a bountiful heart of thanks for your consideration and your kindness. Ask the Father that you will look at Rose Hill this morning in a special way. I pray to, pray to Father that you bless each and every one of us. I pray, Father, as always, look upon our pastor, as always, stand up by his side, hold his hand, and guide his every footstep. And I pray to Father, look at his companion and walk by his side daily. I pray to Father that you encourage her and strengthen her as well. But we ask the Father that you not only bless Rose Hill, but all church those that stand open in your name, preaching an uncompromising gospel. That we do realize, the Father, that the harvest is truly white and that the labors are few. So I pray to Father that you bless, bless us and, and call upon us to be able to go into the hills, into the highways, the byways, to do all that we can to compel law men, women, boys, and girls to come to a Savior that can save. Don't forget our, our sick and afflicted. And I pray to Father that you look around the land and country 
I just ask the Father that you wave your hand in mercy. I ask the Father that you, you give us a mind to keep on keeping on. And let us focus our eyes on the star post and glory. Do you know blessing with us in our Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our lesson today is, is coming from the book of Deuteronomy, uh, the 18th chapter, the 15th to the 22nd verse. And the subject of our lesson today is Prophets of Deliverance. And most of us Bible scholars that are familiar with uh, this section of Scripture, and one may come away and say, well, I'm very much familiar with this story. And I'm very much familiar with uh, what God done with his leader. And, and so it's not very much I think I can really glean from this lesson. But we pray to Father that we have an open heart and an open mind. And at the same time, realize that there's always something new. There's always something different there as we go through the scripture. And things that we've read in time past, we will find that it was something that we didn't see at that time because as our knowledge grows, understanding grows, so therefore we're able to perceive new things in the scripture. So we pray for that we have an open mind and that we listen and we see how these people are conducting themselves and we pray we, that we use this lesson as a mirror before our face that we can look to see where we fit here and where we are being faithful, but at the same time, look to see if we have fallen short uh, those precepts and what the Lord expects of his people in these latter days of time. Again, we say our subject is prophets of deliverance. And I would like to somewhat, uh, myself, put somewhat of a, a second uh, theme to this lesson. And I would say, it, it was a time of transition. So we'll read our scripture and then we'll go right into the lesson. Our devotion reading is coming from Psalm, the 7th seven, seven division, uh, verses 11 through 20. Background scripture, Exodus 12, 28 through 50, and Deuteronomy, 15, Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 22, which is our printed text. And it reads as follows. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee. Of thy brethren like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God. Neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among thy brethren, like unto thee, and will put my word in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whomsoever will not hearken unto his, to my word which he shall speak in my name, I will, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously thou shalt not be afraid of him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and above all to the doers of his word. 
So as we move into our lesson, our theme for the quarter is prophets faithful to God's covenant. Our unit one theme is faithful prophets. Our lesson aim after participating in this lesson, each learner will be able to, number one, summarize what God said about the prophet and message to come. <clears throat> Explain how Moses' words were intended to guide Israel as God's covenant people. Prepare a set of guidelines for distinguishing true from false teaching today. We have two outlines. Our first outline, authority. Coming from Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 18, A, raise up by the word. We will footnote that, what can and can't change. B, requested by the people. A second outline, accountability. Deuteronomy 18, 19 through 22. A, to listen and obey. B, to punish false prophets. And a final footnote, deadly prophets. And C, to test any claim. Then we have a conclusion. A, plan for the future. B, prayer. C, thought to remember. As we look into a lesson at this time in Israel history, we find we are at a point, as we said a moment ago, at a point of transition, while God's people are preparing to have a change of leadership. And if you use a little biblical history, we know that, uh, that uh, Moses one day was a, uh, was a, uh, uh, mining sheep on, 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 on the back side of the mountain uh, when he uh, he worked for his father-in-law Jethro and as he as he worked with the sheep he noticed off in the distance a burning bush and um, and out of curiosity he felt that he needed to go check this thing out and it was at this point in time that God and everything made himself known to Moses and also let Moses know that uh, when he came down to his people, God has chosen him to be the leader. Now, you know, in most cases, when people are not expecting or seeking leadership, and then when the task falls to them, they are somewhat reluctant, and we know that Moses uh, was reluctant to accept the leadership role over God's people. But the main point that I'm getting to is that Moses was selected by God, and God knows who and what leader would be best for his people. And people themselves, when they try to select the leader, and we do it in the same sense like uh, we use elections. Give an example like the presidential election we just had for 2020. And we've seen uh, what type of controversy that came about when things are somewhat left to people. But God, God sits behind the scene as he sits out and looks low. And as he will, God will sanction who he feels the leader would be the best at that point in time in a nation's history. So, but in this sense, God himself made the selection of the first leader of the nation of Israel, and Moses was the man. And, and as we know through biblical history that Moses did a a good job as well as he could as a man to be able to live up to God's ordinance, live up to God's standards and do as God commanded him to do to lead the people. But we know that was not an easy task. But with God's help and, and with God's support and the knowledge of God present at all times, Moses was able to get the job done. Now, so as the lesson begins, 
as we said a moment ago, we are getting ready to have a transition from, from one leader to the next. And God always knows what leader that is that's waiting in the background. And when that time comes, God introduces and brings forth that leader. So as God chose Moses uh, from the beginning to be the leader over his people, God is preparing to do the same thing. Now, let's say said in verse 15, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of the brethren like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. He note that. First, the prophet would be from the midst of the Israelites. And he would, he would be a member of the covenant people. Second, the prophet would be like Moses in certain respect. And third, the command shall hearken is implied in the third characteristic that the prophet would be someone who had authority. Now, as the people dealt with Moses, they were very much aware and conscious of the fact that Moses was speaking for and representing the Almighty God. And, and knowing this, that put a certain amount of fear in them as to how they behaved. When Moses came before them, he would always say, he say, the Lord God spoke to me, or the Lord God instructed me. These are the words of the Lord God. And hearing this, the people uh, would immediately uh, take those words to heart and obey. Now we know they didn't all the time obey like they should, but God always uh, used the method to be able to, to re-instill that fear to, to the point of whereby when Moses let it be known that the Lord was displeased, uh, they straightened up. Now, I want to take a quick little sidebar right here to be able to bring things into 2021. Now, I realize that these, these things that were happening in our lesson there was a long time ago. And mankind nowadays doesn't fear God as he did in times past. That's mainly because God operates differently now. And with God is allowing his Son and the Holy Spirit to operate in the age of grace. In that time, God himself would move and speak swiftly. And that he not only chastised the people, he even destroyed some of them. So transgressing God in that time period was a death sentence. So we thank God and everything for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and for the age of grace. Uh, he, in the Holy Spirit, he would hold a lot of the wrath that God would do, but because of his son, because of the sacrifice Jesus Christ made for us, God and everything in his loving way withholds punishment. Alright? Now, if we look at our lesson again, we see God has instructed in Moses to tell the people that he is preparing to introduce a new leader. And Moses is giving what is called his farewell address. So he letting the people know that he will no longer be there uh, and that God has already set in place a new leader, that the leader wouldn't come from out of nowhere, or from some strange land or wherever. He would come from the very midst of the people that he, he had been. So a leader must know what his people need. A leader must know the conditions that they operate in from whence they came, and specifically why God intended for them to go. And so therefore, he uh, will be knowledgeable to the point of whereby when he is introduced, the, the, the problems, the headache, the heartache that his, his, his leader, which is Moses, 
had to go through, he was able to witness that and he knew exactly what the role of leadership would entail. Now again, God is getting ready to introduce this new leader, but God had to make sure that as with Moses, the people had to know their leader had to have authority and that this authority didn't come from the people. This authority came directly from God. And then they used the phrase in, in the lesson, ye shall hearken unto him. In other words, when he speaks, you listen. And not only listen, but obey. Now we know the people, we have a hard job of listening sometimes, and then an even harder job of obeying. But God is a merciful God, but his, his patience has a limit. And we will see in the lesson today uh, how everything fell in place as God is speaking with Moses and as Moses is speaking to the people as to what to expect. It said, it said, an earlier fulfillment close at hand for Moses' audience was found in the man Joshua. So therefore, we know that Joshua was one of Moses' right hand men. And that uh, Joshua uh, helped with the military aspect of the children of Israel. And he was, he was very faithful, very loyal. And that's one thing uh, God looks for in a leader, one that is faithful, one that is loyal. And, and that when it comes down to doing God's will, he or she is obedient. And so God can work with an obedient spirit. Now, a contrary spirit, God has a hard time with that. But again, looking at the man Joshua, uh, God knows Joshua has the potential to be leader of his people. So as we look, as said Moses' successor was to be like him, and in the sense, that that message from God would be 100% in unison. So whatever Moses has said to the children of Israel as he led them, that this new leader, Joshua, uh, his message, might, his style might be different, but they will be 100% on the same page. And 100% in what God is intending for the children of Israel. Now, <clears throat> verse 16 says, And according to all that thy desires of the Lord thy God in Horeb, <clears throat> excuse me, in the days of assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see that this great fire anymore that I die. Now that is coming from the phraseology that the people knew that uh, when God, in time past, when God called them to Mount Sinai, and he told Moses to bring the people to the mountain and everything, he told them to, to wash themselves and clean themselves up and come to the base of the mountain. And that uh, since they had inquired that they wanted to hear from God directly because they were tired of hearing from Moses, and God said, well, I will speak to them myself. See, but when God came, uh, you know, the lightning flash, the thunder roared, there was earthquakes on every side as to why the children of Israel encamped. And so the power in which the Lord was displaying was so fearsome to the people, uh, they said that, no, we didn't want to speak to God directly anymore. Moses, uh, you speaking to God for us and we listen to you, that is good and fine enough with us. And so right there, they knew that, that, the, that, that the power that God had was a fearsome power. And he didn't get the name Almighty God for nothing. And so therefore, they indicated right here their request, and now we do not want to face God ourselves. Moses, you speak to him and we will hear. Now, 
He said, and the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. So the Lord let me know that uh, uh, I hear what they said, and I'll honor that request. Moses, you and I, we will keep speaking, and you will relay the message to them. All right? In verse 18, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all, that I shall command him. So therefore, that whatever Joshua said, as with Moses, these are the words coming from the God himself. And that when you hear him speak, and, 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 and you will know that he is speaking on my behalf, as I have commanded him. So it shouldn't be any doubt about when he says anything. This is not, this is not Joshua speaking, uh, or anybody else speaking right here. And not what I heard, what I think. These words are coming directly from God. And we look at our leaders nowadays, it's how we perceive our leader. If our leader has been consistent, and if he has been factual in his delivery of the word, and that, that he instructs us all to, to read and study God's word. And as we, we read and study, obey what God instructs us to do. In Romans 12 and 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your, your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable of God, which is your reasonable service. If you do these things, you will be obedient to God because you have sacrificed yourself for God. Now, again, uh, God, God is letting them know that as I present this leader, uh, there's a certain accountability that you as the people uh, must be able to account for. Now, you need to listen and obey. Verse 19, And it shall come to pass that whomsoever will not hearken unto my word, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So when, when God's word is spoken to us, and it's coming from our pastors, maybe from our teachers, our leaders, or what's it, and the word is true, and, and the, the people of the congregation will, will not hear or accept it, then you will hear from God. So therefore, obedience and everything uh, has everything to do with blessings that come from God. Disobedience? No. You can write that off. If you disobey, will not listen, will not hearken. You cannot expect the blessing of the Lord. But what you can expect is God holding you to account for your behavior. Alright? But he also let us know that sometimes you're going to have false teachers. False prophets. And, and people ask the question, well, how would I know which one of those is real and which one of those is fake? And, 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 and the lesson in the scripture, God let it be known that if they speak in my behalf, whatever they speak is going to come to pass. And it can be validated. But if they're not speaking on my behalf, they're speaking of themselves. And that will come to know. So, that old saying, a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. The word in which these false pre prophets preach will bring uh, trouble and disarray. So God said, be prepared for them. And, and, but at the same time, if they're, if they're saying they're speaking for him and they are not, God said they shall die. And, and, and my final words right here. That we are as God's people. God looks for us to be able to follow leadership and obey. And we are obedient to leadership. Everything works. So keep this in mind. That uh, as the lesson was showing that there was transitioning from one leader to the next, God expects obedience. May God bless you and may the Lord bless and keep us all. Amen. Thank you.